Hello everyone and thank you for joining me again for another episode of the Entrepreneur Mindset Show. Today I'm going to share something on a topic that I really believe it's a game changer for us as entrepreneurs and that is problem solving. So if you've been with us for quite a while right now, you kind of know how we go about this show. So we're going to have some slides that we look at, some you know supporting uh, kind of um, you know pictures and codes that will help kind of paint the picture what we mean by problem solving. So this is now the last episode from this series at least of the Entrepreneur Mindset Show. So if you're tuning in on Facebook or on YouTube or on our website, thank you for doing that. Thank you for supporting us. You know, if this is not your first show, you already know my name is Florin Lungo and I'm so delighted to share with you this topic today. And so I'm going to switch between the slides and, uh, and, and the camera, right? So today's topic is problem solving and the problem solving mindset. And just a reminder for us to know that we have kind of the same understanding of what mindset is. You know, I've been sharing this throughout the, the program now that mindset is actually a set of beliefs, expectations and, um, you know, attitudes about a situation or an outcome. And if we go one step further and we look at what attitude is, right, so one of the uh, best examples of, of best definition of what attitude is is a composite of our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. So the thoughts we think, the feelings we feel, and the action we take. And if you think about that, if our attitude is the composite of our thoughts, feelings, and actions, isn't that true that the way we feel and what we think about a situation would determine the action that we're going to take, and then the action that we're going to take, it will you know, ultimately determine our results. So from that perspective, that's why I believe it's so important to, to work on our mindset, because if we can have the right mindset towards the situation or not, go, we will also have the right results. So that's why I'm so passionate about this topic, and what that's why I spend so, you know so much time into this program, um, you know, going deeper into these mindsets. What are these different perspectives, these mindsets that successful entrepreneurs have developed, and what can we do to develop those two in in our lives? Okay, so let's look at let's look at it. Let's dive in. So today we're looking at the problem solving mindset. We say that. You know, we want to solve problems from the inside out rather than solving them from the outside in. And, you know, Albert Einstein has shared that uh, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that we use, you know, when we create them. And he goes on to say that, I mean, before we go to the next quote, I just wanted to, you know, kind of mention something there. Think about the depth of that code. We cannot solve the problems with the same mindset, the same thinking we use to create them. What does it mean? It means that we need to elevate our thinking. We need to see a different perspective, a you know, a broader perspective, so we can solve the problem, right? Because otherwise, we create the, exactly the same results over and over again. And I think one of the challenges that you know many of us face is that we jump to conclusions too fast, right? In, in fact, we don't spend enough time into analyzing the, the, the cause of the problem and the root cause of the problem. And so it, it might be that the solution we're applying is just something that uh, treats a symptom and not the cause. That's why he, he has this other famous quote as well, where he says that if, you, if he would had one hour to solve a problem, he would spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes only thinking about the solutions to the problem. Think about that. You know, this is 95% of the time thinking about the problem rather than thinking about the, the solutions. And, and isn't that true that we so fast, you know, jump to solutions? Because the challenge is with problems is that no one wants to suffer. No one wants to stay in the problem. And we don't like to stay in the problem for long enough for it to actually, you know, for, for us to really kind of see what the root cause is. You know, what 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 it, what is in What's the thinking that is causing me this problem, right? Because, you know, we have to face it. You know, most of our problems that we face it are things that we have created. And now, you know what? The problems, the circumstances, the, you know, the, the, the challenges we face are an opportunity for us to become the solution 
rather than seeking a solution. If you think about when we are taught, uh, you know, in school we are not taught how to solve problems or we are not taught about how to, you know, solve life problems. We, we're taught about how to solve a math problem, but not a life problem. And so we're, we're taught what to think, not how to think. And here it's really about how to think and how to solve the problems that we're facing, right? And so if you're facing any problem right now, you know, that's an opportunity for you to become the solution. So rather than us looking for a solution outside of us, because that's kind of the first reaction, if we face a problem, we're taught that we should go seek outside uh, counsel. We should we should go seek help. And, and that has its place, right? And And that's why I mentor people. But when I coach people, that's when I empower them to really look inside and, and become the solution, right? So, so rather than me giving them the answer, and they need to come back to me for answers every single time, and they, we create this kind of dependency relationship. That's not what I want for people. You know, I want them to become independent, and I want them to be able to solve problems by themselves. So think about this, this statement here. So the, a key concept in what we're doing right now is that the problems that we're facing are the opportunities for us to become the solution rather than seek a solution. This is us looking on the inside, right, rather than seeking solutions outside. And the condition and circumstances and the problems that, you know, we face in our lives and businesses are actually the curriculum of our evolution. Let me say that again. So the, the problems, the conditions, the circumstances that we face in our lives or in our businesses or in careers are the curriculum of our evolution. And what I mean by that is that in order for us to kind of, you know, quote unquote, graduate, you know, and go to the next level of awareness and to the next level of success, we need to be able to solve some problems, right? We need to be able to deal with some circumstances. And, and in the same way, when you, we were in school, they told us, you have this curricula, you have to go through this uh, subject in order for you to graduate, to go to the next, to the next uh, level. You, you cannot go and, and learn multiplication and divisions if you don't know addition, right? And subtraction. You need to go to those first in order for you to understand multiplication and division and radicals and whatever comes next, right? So in the same way, for us to get to the next level in our businesses, in our lives, you know, in general, we need to solve some problems at this level and be able then to, to move forward. So that's why the circumstances, the, the, the problems, the conditions that we face right now are the curriculum for our evolution to the next step. So we should not curse them because they're there for a reason. You know, first reason they're there is because something in our thinking, in our mindset, has created or attracted them, right? You know, we, we, we ask ourselves, why am, I, why am I creating this in my life? You know, I can't believe it. Why, why am I in this situation again and again? And why, why do you think is that? It's because there is something in our thinking, there, there is a pattern there that we need to identify, we need to change, we need to break uh, in order for us to, to create different results. So th that's why we're, we're, you know, Albert Einstein says that, uh, you know, if you, if you do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, that, that's the definition of insanity, right? So, so we, we, we want to look at what do we do that creates the results and how can we change something in what we do so then we're able to create different results. Make sense? Yeah, I hope so. So let's look at another code here, you know, Again, I believe this is this to be true as well, right? So most people will surrender what they know, um, you know, every single day for for what's familiar. Uh, and, and this is something from my, my mentor, Paul Martinelli, right? So, so what he's saying is that we don't want to deal with the problems. We don't want to deal with the problems of our lives. So, so we will surrender what what we want for what's familiar every single day because it's easier not to deal with the problems rather than dealing with the problems and so uh, this goes hand in hand with, with this quote by Henry, Code that you, Henry Ford that you just saw on your screen earlier he says that most people spend time and energy going around problems rather than trying to solve them so 
if you think about your income and you know your value as an entrepreneur as a business owner isn't that more isn't that you become more valuable for your organization for your business for your family for those around you if you can sell if you can solve you know more complex problems right i, I believe that you know you know there is there is this law of compensation right so many people you know kind of are unaware of how the how business works and, and and the law of compensation says very clearly that the amount of money that one person makes it's in direct proportion with the the need for what they do so if if you can solve a problem if there is a need for that problem to be solved then then you you're in the great place in, in, you're in the in a great place right then so the need for what you do right your ability to do it in other words your ability to solve the problem and the ease the 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 difficulty to replace you in the marketplace it's either easy to replace you cuz maybe you know um you you're not solving such complex problems and then it would be easier to find someone that that does the same thing like you do or it might be more difficult to solve comp- uh, to to replace you because you really solve complex problems so our ability to solve problems whether it in our personal life or in a business or in a career it's in direct proportion with the amount of money that we pay we were paid right because if we can solve you know more complex problems absolutely people will pay for that and they're willing to pay for that So that's why I believe this is really really important for us a skill that we should master because if we can get, become better problem solvers uh this will increase our value and and who doesn't want to to an increase in their value in the marketplace so let's look at some of the things we could do to become a better problem solver and how can we look at solution based thinking you know and 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 work from the inside out right Let, let's look at this So these are some steps that we could do uh to create this solution based thinking and and create this mindset right so the first thing would be to write out the exact problem you're facing you know and, and this is to write out the problem in in so much in as much details as we can because we kind of doing three things here right so the first thing is that we allow us to kind of see the problem right we have it on paper and we are out, we 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 allow us ourselves to kind of have um the problem on paper and this is separated from us so when we talk about the problem we don't talk about us right it's not about you know you screw it up you, you made a mistake no it's about well that's the problem and let's look at the problem so here we separate ourselves from the problem now the second is that you know it gives us a different perspective on the problem right so so when we have it on paper and we're able to look at it 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 gives us a different perspective and and then kind of the third element here is where we are able to identify you know those places where we say this means that what what i mean by that is that we have what what i just mentioned earlier you know these learning models these patterns of thinking in our you know in our being where we might have assigned meaning to things right when when we take what we call these little shortcuts in our thinking where we say well because of that that means this right uh, i i give you an example of uh, you know me giving a seminar and someone falling asleep in in front of in front of me like in the first in the first row and and i was thinking well you know someone fell asleep while i was giving a seminar so that means you know my presentation was boring and and then i i didn't even stop there i i went even further and i said well that means you know i'm a terrible speaker and we don't know any of that we just know that someone has fallen asleep you know while i was giving a presentation that's the only piece of the truth we know the rest it's something that i assign meaning to this means that and in fact might be that the person was 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 tired maybe feeling sick maybe you know had some some you know health challenges maybe were working a night shift i don't know it, it didn't say anything more 
to me than, than just that, but I assign meaning to it. So when we write down the problem, we are able to identify where have we assigned this meaning to things, where we said this means that, right? So, so that's why we want to write the problem down in as much details as we can because we are able to identify. First, we are able to separate ourselves from the problem. Secondly, we, we, we see from a higher perspective. And thirdly, we can see where we might have some things that we, uh, we assign meaning to. And we have this, um, this means that kind of models that, that do, do not serve us, right? Now, the second step would be for us to draw from our past experiences, right? So draw from our past experience, resources, and, and, and resourcefulness and creativity, and, and look at what, what problems have we solved in the past, you know? What experience have we had when we were successful at solving problems? What, what resource, resources have we used then? And what in general resources have we used then? How have we used our creativity? Right? And, and look at how can these past experiences, these times in your life when you solved problems, you know, how did those things help you then? Right? And then now, how can you use that again and again into this problem right now? So, so you were able to solve some problems in the past. And now, use that experience and use those resources inside of you to solve some different problems right now. And again, this is us building this muscle that we are the solution rather than seeking the solution, right? Let's look at the next step here. So the next one is identifying the resources that, you know, we learn and, and, and were, were adopted. You know, whatever, um, whatever it was that helped us back then, um, what, what was that? You know, you know, what did we learn? You know, did we learn that... Um, you know, did we did we identify some patterns? Did we um, this time is also when we seek help, right? If we seek help to to someone, to a colleague, to someone more experienced, to to a mentor, to a coach, to a thinking partner, if we did that in the past, then it is also a good time for us to identify what did we do. You know, what were those things that that helped us, right? What did we learn in the past? And what did we adopt? It? Did we adopt it a specific method? Well, may, we, we might not be aware of that, but we have models. And, and we, you know, how we do one thing is how we do everything. And because we have those models, what happens is that we might have, you know, used the model in the past to, to solve a problem. And we want to go back and identify, you know, what resources have we used? Do we go to websites, books, uh, sources, colleagues? You know, how did we... You know, how did we solve it back then? And how can we, you know, integrate that same model right now? Uh, let's look at another one. So write down what the problem looks like solved. I think this is one of those things that uh, we, we are not, we are actually uh, not, not doing enough, right? Because this helps us to practice, you know, the building this mental model of perfection that we are claiming that we want to create. Like, how will this, uh, how will this, um, problem solved look like. This is about us looking at, if you like, you know, what would the ideal situation be in my life when this problem will be solved? Because unless we know what we're looking for, how would the problem solved look like, uh, we probably will not really solve it, um, you know, permanently. We, we're probably, you know, going to apply a short-term fix because we don't really know how this is uh, This is going to look like solved. And what we do on the short term, we apply some kind of quick fixes. And um, when we do that, uh, you know, the problem actually, the, the, a small problem uh, could become a huge problem. And so that's why we want to get very clear on what it is that we want. So how will this look like in the ideal world, right? If this will not be a problem, how would our life or business look like? And, and then look that, okay, so, so if this would not be a problem, oh, I will be able to do this, I will be able to do that, I will be able to do this. All right, okay, so then how this problem needs to look like solved in order for you to be able to do this, to do this and that. And so that's why we really want to get very clear what it is that we want to achieve, right? 
it's not just about uh, alleviating the pain, right? Because that's so many times we look at, oh, um, you know, I, I have a headache, right? And and because I have a headache, well, uh, I must have, I, I must take a pill, right? But that's that's not the that's not the, the the long-term solution because you might have a headache because maybe you haven't had a you know good night's sleep or maybe um, maybe there is some some tension in in, in your um, in your muscles maybe maybe you haven't had enough water and so many other causes could could cause you to have a headache but if we take a pill then we kind of solve the symptom not not the cause right and and this goes also for business so so when I when I sit down with businesses and they tell me, Florian, you know, we, we're not selling enough and, and, and you know, um, leads are not coming in right now. I say, well, okay, so let's look at what you, what, what did you do six months ago? I say, well, it doesn't matter. We, we, you know, we want to solve the problem now. Yeah, yeah, but, but let's look at what did you do six months ago. Why? Because six months ago, actually, when you were supposed to sow seeds, now you're kind of at the reaping phase of those leads and those seeds, right? And if you didn't do enough of, you know, see, sowing, you know, and, and seeding, in, you know, six months ago, that's why you're not reaping right now. So the problem is not right now here, uh, it, it's something else. So that's why we want to look at, you know, how would this problem look like solved? So so that would probably look like, you know, we're having a constant flow of leads and, and you know, and prospect. Perfect. Then let's look at what do we need to do now so we have that constant flow of, of leads and, and uh, prospects in, in six months time. So that's kind of how this idea of looking at how the problem solved would look like because this is where we know what we're looking for. And knowing what we're looking for, it will allow us to really see the long-term solutions rather than the short and fixes. All right. So let's look at, at um, the fifth one here. So let me do that. I think this is where we really need to trust ourselves and have faith in ourselves because, you know, if we don't have faith in ourselves and if we don't trust ourselves, like how would we be able to kind of, you know, convince other people to have faith in ourselves. Because if we are in business, if we are in a career, we, even if we are with our families and friends, you know, we need to earn those people trust. And how could people trust us to be, you know, uh, by their side and, and you know, helping them when they need to solve problems if we're not able to solve problems and trust ourselves in solving those, solving those problems. So I think so many times we reach out for solutions. And I said, there is a time for that. That's why I, I, I mentor people. But I so much more believe in coaching people because this helps them to really become the solutions to their situation. I really believe that the biggest transformation that has happened in my life for the last seven years, when I really become a, you know, a student of, of human potential and the way we create results, has been that I become more aware of the things that I can do. You know, I shared this that so many times. You know, if you would sit down with a piece of paper and you would write down all the things that you've done in the last year or let's say in the last two years. And, and and so many of those things seem impossible to you just just a few years before. I, I you know I, 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 I'm willing to bet on that. I, I will bet that you have done things even this year, 2020, 2021, that you thought are impossible. So so many teams have done so many people have done things, you know, in this kind of post-COVID era that they thought were impossible or they will never be able to do it before COVID. But what happens is that, you know, oh, there, there is a fine line between what, what's possible and what's impossible. It, it says that it, it, that lies in your determination. The difference between possible and impossible lies in your determination. So trusting ourselves that we can bring this forward, that we can find the solution to the problems that we're facing and going through the problems, going through some, take, take an example in your life and apply this system, apply this you know, five-step system to, to one problem. You write down exactly what the problem is. You know, 
all the details that you can you can have you know detach yourself from it and see you know where might you have these patterns where you assign thing uh, you know meaning to things then draw out from your past experiences and resources and creativity and look at how did you solve these problems in the past identify those resources that you use and learn from last time and and then write down how the problem will look like solved you know what would this ideal situation look like uh, I give this example again with, you know, someone saying, well, for I don't want to struggle financially anymore. I said, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. That's not what you want. That's not the solution, right? The solution is you, you want to try financially. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. No, no, no. You, you, you might have meant that, but what you said is that you don't want to struggle financially anymore. I don't ask you what you don't want. I ask you what you want. And so when they change that, it, it, it might sound, you know, subtle. You say, well, Florian, that's semantic. It really matters. Yes, it does. Because our subconscious mind doesn't know negation. And so when we say, you know, I don't want to struggle financially anymore, you know, the image that comes into our mind's eye is actually an image of struggle. You know, I cannot use the word struggle, you know, by by not not having a picture of struggle right even if i say well, don't think about struggle what would you do and so when we change that and now we define the, the solution to the problem as you know i want to thrive financially i want to have the financial means to to live the life that i want then we kind of change the picture of what the problem looks like solved and that way, we give that picture to our subconscious mind, which starts to run files into our memory and look at you know what it is that we've done in the past when we wanted to achieve a result like that. So that's really you know that's really why I shared this framework with you. And and I really believe that when you trust yourself and have faith in yourself, then then you're able to uh, you're able to become a better problem solver. Because as I just said. If you think about being in business, being an entrepreneur, and and you know, making money, money is merely a reward for solving problems, and I and I truly believe that, right? If you think about that, I give this example of you know home delivery, right, or or, or of delivery companies, right? Think about that. I'm here. I need something. I order that. And then I need it delivered on my, you know, at, at my door because I don't, I don't have the time or I don't want to spend the time into going buying them somewhere and, and, and then, you know, driving there, you know, fuel and time and all of those things, unless it's something that, you know, you really want to, um, to do and enjoy. It's an experience. That's a different thing. But some things, I just need them. I don't need to go through the experience of buying them. I need them, right? I like food and I like to cook. So, so if I would have to order let's say, groceries from a French, you know, kind of marché from a French market, you know, in Provence, I will hate that because I like the feeling to go out to the market to kind of smell the fruits, to see the fruits, to touch the fruits, the vegetables. That's an experience for me. But if I will, if I will need a new computer, if I will need a new phone, if I will need, a, you know, paper for, for, for my printer, I buy, I buy it online. There is no... Join me going, you know, uh, buying uh, copy paper. No, not at all. I don't even know what to buy. I just buy one, and it's it's uh, the same the same as the the printer, and that's it. So some things I need them home, and so so me, I'm willing to pay for someone that can solve that problem, that can deliver this home, and so that's why. Basically, and, and at, at, at its core, what we're doing, you know, and, and, and the reward that we're getting, it's, it's just because we are able to solve problems. So that's why I really believe we are a, if we are able to get better at solving problems, um, you know, our value in the marketplace will, will increase. And so let's look at, at, at what we can do to develop this um, problem-solving mindset, shall we? So developing our problem-solving mindset, let's give you some steps here, right? So the first thing we could do is, of course, do not avoid problems. And I, I know this sounds obvious, Florian, this is obvious. Yeah, it is, but, you know, um, <laughs> so many people avoid problems because we don't like to... Well, the word problem, if we think about the word problem, you know, what, what does it mean? Is it, that, you know... What we have assigned as a meaning with the word problem, it's probably some 
some sort of suffering, some so, sort of pain. And so when we think about problems, I don't think there is um, anyone in the world that really, really wants to face problems. And I may, maybe maybe you're you're really good problem solver, and that that's your job, right? That that's your calling. And, and I get that, right? Um, but unless you you you're you're that, for most people. Um, problems are painful and problems are challenging. And so we might have situations in our lives where we feel challenged and we want to avoid those problems. I, I remember me um, dealing with this problem of, of you know smoking and I wanted to quit smoking or actually I don't really want to quit smoking, but it was a problem. It was a problem for me, for my health and, and for my relationship with my wife. And so I, I, for so long, I kind of, you know, try to work around this problem, try to avoid that problem and rather than face the problem. Say, well, okay, so at the end of the day, smoking, it's not helping me and my health, right? So why, why do I, you know, why do I fight so much for keeping this habit? Because I didn't want it to face the problem. So, so becoming a better problem solver, absolutely, we need to face some problems, right? We don't want to avoid them. Um, might not be comfortable, but I, I know I know the feeling of you know really solving a problem for forever or for long term. I know what what that feels like, and I and I believe you know too. So think about that when you next time try to avoid problems. Let's look at, at another one. What we can do? We need to recognize you know what's the purpose of the problem. Right? We just mentioned that uh, you know the purpose of this problem is, is to cause us to grow and become the person that can solve those problems and, and for us to kind of graduate, if you like, to the next level of awareness in our lives. And so unless we we want to stay where we are, well, we cannot avoid problems. And and actually the you know the bigger your business would be, the bigger problems you'll have to solve. <laughs> and that that's you know that's just the truth of life. I cannot tell you anything else. So so us not avoiding problems and then understanding what the purpose of those problems help us to really build this you know problem solving mindset because we know what the problems are there you know if if you if you own a business if you drive a business if you um you know struggle now with with sales then then the reason why you're struggling with sales is because you and your team needs to be stretched and be able to overcome that problem so then you you're able to tap into the next level of of business and so on and so forth, and then at the next level of business, there will be other challenges that you don't even know right now. But before you have solved this, we're not able to get to the next one, because because you're gonna get this one again and again, and you're wondering why am I keep getting this one? Well, there's something maybe there that is causing that, something in your in your processes, something in in the way you you do business, in the way your team does business, and so. I really believe we should not avoid problems and, and recognizing what the reason for the problems is, it will uh, it will allow us to kind of see them in a, in a different light. Right on. So the third one here is to operate from this solution-based thing, right? So I will not go through this again, but uh, this is applying the, 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 the framework that I just shared with you, right? So applying those five steps and, and apply from this, work from this solution-based thinking, right? So look at the problem, see how you solved that in the past, see what solutions have you used, and trust yourself to be able to, to solve that problem. Because um, I think um, that, that, would, that would help you a lot. All right. And so the last one here is, um, or the before last one here, is to avoid these short-term fixes, right? I remember uh, a time when... Um, I was on a call and, and my mentor, Paul Martin, shared an example where, you know, because he was running this um, construction, um, you know, not construction, but a cleaning company that uh, sometimes uh, did a lot of construction cleaning. So the first time the building was built and then they they needed to clean it up before uh, kind of the, the first tenants would move in. And so this, uh, you know, uh, this led, uh, you know, his team that there was driving cars around construction works to, uh, from time to time, to have a flat tire. And and then <laughs> they use this kind of quick fix that I know now even even modern cars they don't even have a they don't have a, a spare tire. You know, my 
my Volvo doesn't have a spare tire. I have this little spray, this bomb that I, I know I shake that one and has some foam that it's expanding. And then you could just, you, you put that into the, into the flat tire and then it's expanding, it fills the hole and then you, you can run again with that tire. But you cannot drive, you know, as much as you want. You could drive probably, I don't know, 30, 40 miles or 50 kilometers and, and you need to repair. So this is making it easy for you to get to a repair shop. But sometimes, you know, his team forgot about, about, about the, you know, the, the flat tire and the little problem that they had with, with the tire and then drove much longer than the, you know, 30, 40 miles. And all of a sudden, a problem, which was a tiny problem, expanding, did exactly what all problems that we, we don't solve do. It expanded. And, and it could have become a bigger problem if one of those those tires just you know blew or or exploded. And so, again, this is the difference between applying a, a short term patch, a short term fix, uh, like like this uh, the foam spray, or you know going through the pain of you know solving the problem because because they had to have the car you know stuck at the at, at the um, you know workshop they had to take the tire off to to re, you know to take the um you know to take it down and and you know being patched from the inside and and, and then that that would that would be you know solved but um sometimes you know we, we run with this you know short term fixes and 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 they they could lead to bigger bigger problems so that's why we want to avoid these short term fixes and kind of the last thing we could do here is is to look at how can we not only seek these long term solutions but also provide them right so if we are in business right you know if we are entrepreneurs, because I believe if you're interested in entrepreneurial mindset, you are somehow either an entrepreneur, either you have a business, or you're, you're thinking about you know, opening a business or, or starting a business. So when we look at the solution that we provide to other people, it is very easy for us to give the answer. It's very easy for us to give the short-term solution. And I, I'm going to give you an example. So there was a time when I led the team of engineers and... Um, you know, many times my team would come to me and, and for answers, you know, they were doing this and that and, and they would they would get stuck and they would come to me and say, Well, Florian, I need I need help with this. It doesn't work. And so what doesn't work? Well, I apply the procedure and it doesn't work. So well, okay, so so tell me where 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 you get stuck. I do this, I do that, and I get stuck. And what's what's the problem? And I said, Well, okay, so if you go back to the procedure and read on page number seven, you know, paragraph number three, it will tell you something there. Maybe you missed that. Well, I don't want to go. I don't have the procedure right now. C can you just tell me? You know, I could have told them, you know, what the what the solution was. But if I would have done that, what would happen is that, and I've done that at the beginning because I didn't know. I didn't know all this. I, I'd learn it. What happened is like, you know, three, four weeks later, you know, two months later, they come back with the same question. I said, how come you come with the same question? Didn't you got it? I just told you this. Didn't you face the same problem on the last project? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. But 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 you had a good answer. Yeah. So so I realized, okay. So if I'm giving them the answer, what I'm doing is actually I'm I'm solving the, I'm giving them a, you know short term fix. They're happy. They go back to doing their work. They never think about how to into internalize that solution. And next time they face it, they come back to flooring. And what if flooring is not there? Well, they're stuck. And so I said, well, how can I make myself dispensable? How can I make myself, uh, you know, uh, replaceable for my team? And then I started to actually coach them into the answer rather than giving them the answer. Well, okay, so if you go back to, rather than me giving you the answer, you could go back to the procedure and you read on page number seven and you would see that there is there is a, there is a step there. You might have missed that step, or you might have jumped over that step. And and by doing that, it was more painful both for me and for them. You know, it took us a lot more time. They had to go back and kind of understand why that is the answer, rather than just you know get the answer from me. But what happened on the long term? They come less and less to to seek answers because they started to you know. To look at this, they started to kind of solve those problems, you know, from the inside out. They they started to see themselves as being the solution rather than seeking the solution, you know, outside of them. And and, and that's why 
I only seek and provide long-term solution. And this is in every area of my life. You know, I remember, you know, the camera that I'm using right now, I bought another camera. It was, it was, it was less expensive and it was placed, well, this is a great camera for, you know, uh, live streaming. And I said, okay, good, let's take it. And then I was really disappointed with the quality. And I said, well, okay, I, I wanted from the beginning to buy a real camera. Uh, I thought that I don't have the money, but after buying this camera, having shipped home, um, trying it for a week, didn't work, had to send it back, had to pack it. I had to send it to, to, to you know, to leave it at a, at a post office. I had to pay for the return. I didn't have, you know, I was not refunded, refunded the, the whole um, you know, cost of the, of the return. Um, kind of shipping, and I still had to buy another camera, you know, three or four weeks later, and 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 I lost time and money and energy into trying to use a short-term fix for what I knew from the beginning it should have been a long-term solution, and so that's why I only seek and provide long-term solutions. Anytime you engage with me, if we work together, I'm going to tell you. It's going to cost you. It, it, it's going to take time. But it's going to last. And, and that's my promise. So again, these are some things that we could do to create you know, and develop this problem-solving mindset. And I think the, the kind of the code that summarizes all we, we actually um, went through this, this, uh, this show today it's something by Captain, you know, Jack Sparrow, and he says that the problem is not the problem. The problem is our attitude about the problem. Think about that. So the problem is not the problem. The problem is the attitude that we have towards the problem or about the problem. And that's why I teach mindset, right? Because mindset is a set of attitudes, beliefs, and expectations towards a situation or an outcome. So in when we face a problem, right? The problem itself might not be the problem. It might be just that we have the wrong attitude towards that problem. And, and instead of applying a solution-based thinking and trying to look for solutions inside and apply the inside-out so problem-solving, we're looking for solutions outside. We look for, you know, get rich quick schemes. We look for, for quick fixes, for dirty fixes. And that's why these do not work on the long term. And that's why we're getting the same problem again and again. And so when we see people doing that, that's our golden nugget where we could get in and solve problems once and for all. And that creates value in the marketplace. So that was it. This is what I wanted to share with you today. I'm so delighted you join us. Thank you for being with us on this journey through this entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, I look forward to connect with you again on different channels, to see you on different on different topics. For now, that's kind of the end of this season. And I said for now, because I, I, I never know when we, we're going to get back to entrepreneurial mindset. You know, entrepreneurial mindset is something that I'm passionate about. It will always be the filter through which I will filter everything I learn and teach. But for this show for now, that's kind of the end of this season. So, Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to see you around. Take care. Bye-bye.